said a lot about the youth, but let's not forget that in the 80s, young men that were my age, they went to prison for 30, 40 years, and now they're coming home. They went in as youth, and now they're coming home as men. So we can't forget about them. What are they coming home to? And that was under the Bill Clinton administration. Right. Uh, you know? uh, thank you. So the next speaker I want to bring up, man, it's, it's, it's crazy how you just find yourself surrounded by violence, you know. But the next speaker, I've been blessed to be around some great organizers, people that taught me to organize. But the next speaker, I'm a union member, and I also organize through my union to make sure that the union is making sure that the community is taken care of. So one day, me and him were talking. Come here, Steve. One day, me and him were talking, and I asked him, why does he fight so much for the community? And what blew my mind is his son was also murdered. And I didn't think that because of the way he looks that it could happen to him. And I've been knowing him for almost 10 years and he wears this necklace of his son every day. And it just blew my mind that the bullet doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't, I've seen babies get killed. I've seen grandmothers, mothers, but when he told me, it just blew my mind. And I just wanted him to be able to tell his story about his son. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. And, uh, you know, I, I've been sitting here struggling because Jack was, I was standing over there and Jack was pointing to me and saying, come on up. And, and uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, it, it takes a little bit of courage to speak. Uh, but this is a really inspiring response to this tragedy. And uh, I listened to the words of Taha, Taha and Carol and it was extremely inspiring. Um, you know, it was, it was nine years ago, I got a phone call, just like some of the mothers have mentioned here. And uh, it was one of Danny's friends. And uh, he said, um, come outside. And, and so, you know, I, I come outside and he says, Danny's been shot. And I said, what the fuck are you telling me? You call the medics? You know, I mean, I was just, you know, beside myself. It was three or four blocks away from where I live. I live in um, off Foothill on 20, between 25th and uh, 24th and 25th, um, the Dubs. Um, and uh, so I raced up there, and, and it, of course it was too late. Uh, the cops wouldn't even let me see, you know, would see Danny. Um, and so, you know, I had been before that. I've been involved in things, and in, in uh, you know good things, trying to fight, organizing against the war, organizing against other things. Uh, and I was just about to lay down my, my, uh, you know, my sword or whatever, because, uh, you know, I'm 73 years old now, and I was, that was, I was in, uh, you know, 64 at that time, and I was tired. Um, but Danny was cut down when he was 21. He never had a chance to do half the things that he could have done. Uh, and wanted to do, um, and and so people ask me sometimes, well, what, what happened? I mean, was Danny, you know, the usual thing is, was he, you know, involved in uh, in drugs? Was he involved, you know, in gang banging? Well, he was like every other kid in my neighborhood. Of course, he was smoking stuff. You know, of course, he was doing things in some ways. You know, um, not violence, and he was he was a really friendly kid. So there's a short, a short answer and there's a longer answer. The short answer is, I don't know what happened because I never caught the person who did it. There were four kids killed that day. I mean that weekend, excuse me. And, and you know the way they work in the Oakland homicide, they have two cops and they, they rotate around and they, that's what they, they handle all the, the, the killings of that week. And, and you know, of course, if it's not a, if you don't have a confession, you don't have an eyewitness, you just walk on and forget about it. So the short answer is, I don't know what happened that night. I mean, I, you know, he was, he was out drinking with some friends. He had just gotten off work. Um, he worked out in the, at the refineries out in Chevron. Um, and they were working on cars and they were drinking. And, and he went around the corner to, to take a leak. And someone came up behind him with a shotgun. Um, and then finished him off after he was laying on the ground to his head. Um, so that's, the, you know, in a sense, the short answer is I don't know what happened. The long answer is, I know definitely what happened. 
is because where I live, and it was I, where I live, and, and where I love where I live, it's a culture of violence. Because people don't have any opportunities. The kids grow up without opportunities. People have said this over and over again, so it's not, and I know this is not something new to people. That when you don't have any way forward, and there's no future, you're going to do what you're going to do. I grew up sort of in that kind of a neighborhood, and, and you know, many of us escape, and many don't, but it's gotten a lot worse now than it was back then. And, and you know, after generations, there's just hopelessness, and, and people are going to, you know, you're going to feel good about yourself, so you're going to do things that make you feel good about yourself, so you begin to like that culture of violence. I like it. I'm proud of the fact that I could survive in it, you know? And, and so what happens is that that culture of violence perpetuates itself. But it has a cause, just like Torha says. You know, it's, it just didn't fall out of the sky. It's just not a bunch of people got around and they decided that, that, uh, that they didn't, you know, they liked living like this and, and, and they didn't care about any having no opportunity. So that has a cause. And so one of the things that became real to me in, in a very strong way was that yeah, I have another 15, 20 years in my in, in my life at that point, and I'm thinking I'm going to do things for that Daniel would have done if he had an opportunity, and that's to fight against the causes of what creates the society we live in. And, and you know, I can give you an answer. I can give you my view of it. Um, I think we all have these different views, but it has to do with the fact that there's so much wealth in so few hands, and they do what the fuck they want, and they're going to keep it, and it's almost understandable. You know, if you take a, a large group of people, and you know, 1% in this country is, is, is uh, 3 million people, you know, they, they, they don't act on a basis of rationality. You know, if you take a, a large group of any people, and you walk up to them and say, well, you got to change, or you got to... You, you can't keep doing what you're doing, you know, they'll get rid of you. And they'll get someone else to come up and say, well, we can do, you know, what will help us and we'll go further with us. And, and so that's a natural, that's a nature of things. And we can't change that unless we change this, the relations of power here, the fact that they got so much wealth, there's so much power that, that brings them, and, and a cultural background for that as well. So that's that's all I want to say about that. But but I have to say that that it's not... I mean, people are going to do what they're going to do, and and but I, I think it's very true. You got to understand what the problem is, and that problem is simply there's so much wealth up there. So what, you know, some of the things we've done, you know, I, I work I work with with my union, uh, SEIU ten to one. Uh, I volunteer, um, and um, you know, we fought for things like the minimum wage for taxing the rich and for things like that. And I'll spend 50, 60 hours a week doing that because I think that's right. And, 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 you know, people will spend, like the young man, the young man who, who was mentoring kids, I mean, you know, he, he'll do what he thinks is right, and he'll work at it. And, and that's the spirit I see here, and that's what inspires me. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you much for, very much for all of the things that I know people here do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.